that. So the second question we've got is from um, James. James Hasty, Hasty? James is here. He's, he's got a question he's submitted for us. We'll just wait for the microphone. Thank you, James. Sorry. Particularly for the people at home. Hello. Yeah. Hello there. Thank you. you right? um, what are the next steps in your plan to bring affordable housing to uh, north of the Tyne, and how would it look over the next five to ten years? No, that's, that's a really good question. Um, affordable housing is a cornerstone to pretty much everything we need to achieve. So if people are insecure about their housing, they're not necessarily homeless. Um, you know, I was watching with the family, um, Sorry We Missed You, um, the other day, the, the Ken Loach film. And one of the drivers for that, that character in the film, who's based on an amalgam of real stories, was they keep being asked to move every year because they're in private rent accommodation. So there's a lot beyond just building new houses that needs to happen. Um, we don't have any housing powers, so there's a limit to what we can do. What we have secured from government is a brownfield housing fund. And this, um, I probably shouldn't say kill two birds with one stone because in the interest of biodiversity, um, but this solves a number of problems at the same time. There are um, a lot of sites that the market won't unlock um, because, you know, if there was a former factory on there, it needs clean up and it makes it too expensive. Um, so the, the Time brand factory at, um, at Tynemouth, um, on our shields, um, Fourth Yards in Newcastle, various other places, you know, a, a lot of the work on Scotswood because it's too steep, it requires big retaining walls, major engineering works, and so people don't build on them. The fact that we've been able to secure that money from central government to open up those sites means those houses are being built, and some have been built already. Um, uh, some of the commissioners Key and Blythe, for example. Um, and that allows us some leeway. We don't have the legal powers to compel house builders to do anything, but we can say we need a certain proportion of this. We need some of these things. And at Newbiggin uh, Hall in Newcastle, for example, um, are going up um, a, a collection of houses that are directly for people who need um, much more accessible properties as a result of disability. So they're getting built now. The next phase is we have signed a memorandum of understanding with Homes England, because this was all devolved from, not devolved, it's all sort of kept by central government in a crime go uh, called Homes England, and they decide this. So we've been working with them through our housing and land board. We've set up the programs um, to get the, the pipeline of investments that are needed, and it'll be hopefully, fingers crossed, part of a new devolution deal where we'll get additional funding to do that. Um, and so that's what we're going to do in terms of additional homes being built. We're working with all our registered providers, people like Carbon Homes, Benicia, wonderful um, organizations who, who take their social responsibility wonder, you know, fantastically seriously um, to make sure that these things are happening. Um, there are some things that I would very much like to see a change in the law on, uh, particularly to do with council house receipts and councils actually having the power to build council houses. Um, I see no likelihood that the central government is going to change that, unfortunately. I think that's going to require a change of government. Um, and as a, as a Labour politician, you might be surprised to hear me say that. So that's the trajectory. And the other thing that we, we need to do in terms of affordable housing, and there's a lot to do with retrofitting housing, that's a different question perhaps, um, is there needs to be proper regulation of the private rented sector. There are many landlords who take their responsibility seriously. Uh, unfortunately, there are many who don't. Um, either because they don't have the skill and the experience and they might just have one house and they never look at it and you know, it's dealt with by a letting agency who perhaps have no long-term interest in the success of that property. Um, and there are some, inevitably, who are pretty venal and are just in it for the money um, and who don't treat people well and don't maintain the standard of their properties. And I think um, that's something that were we to get those powers, we could work with it. We'd work very responsibly with the landlords, we'd make sure it was in everybody's best interest. But at the end of the day, unless people have secure homes, everything else is going to be difficult. Thank you very much. Um, since you say that I'm, I'm, it seems an eternal renter, I've never owned a property. I don't, I don't find myself in a position in my life where I can do that. That's by the by. But rent, I do find that renting and the private renting sector, I do live in Newcastle, I live in Heaton. So, of course, we've got a huge student population, fantastic for the local economy. I'm not knocking that at all. But what happens with the housing and the pricing 
of housing because, of course, a landlord can convert uh, one of the downstairs living spaces into a bedroom. There can be multiple bedrooms upstairs, putting in dividing walls and making larger rooms into two smaller rooms and so on. So they can get a lot more money by having six, seven students than a family of three, four, five living in there. Uh, and that's one of the problems that we come up against. And I think, I know you don't have the powers to make those changes, but it is interesting that you, you take that into the whole overarching picture of um, affordable housing. And, and like you said, the housing that you, people feel safe and have longevity and they know they can set down roots and they know they can, they can make a difference in their local community because they are going to live there for an amount of time. That's great. It is. Um, you know, you're, you're talking about um, central Newcastle there, but affordability is actually a big issue in rural Northumberland. Mm. It's a massive issue. If you look at somewhere like Beadnell up the coast, the earnings to house price ratios are about 30, well, house price to earnings ratio is 13 to one. Mm. That's the same as central London. Yeah. Uh, because there's a demand for second homes. So the people who are growing up there can't afford to live there anymore. And this is something that we're working up. Um, and through our housing land board, um, convening again with partners, because it's always everything we do, we're trying to bring as many people as possible, bring in the experts, bringing in people with lived experience um, uh, in terms of what we're doing to convene on homelessness uh, and bring everybody together to perhaps amplify voices. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And thank you for your question, James.